Hey everyone, have you ever tried to learn how to code but got stuck? In my new Private Fan programming class, we're going to break that loop. This course is primarily focused on people who are complete beginners, so don't worry if you don't have any background. This course is different than other courses because we're going to teach you to think like a programmer and solve problems like a robot. So let's get started. Hi everyone. So the last time we talked a little bit about lists as collections, right? So we had our test numbers here, our favorite sports teams in a list. Basically lists are collections of objects in Python. So those objects can be numbers, they can be strings, they can be anything in Python, but they're just collections of them. So we might be interested in more than just one of something. So here we have these test numbers. We have one, two, three, four, and three and a half inside of there. And then our favorite sports teams I have New York Giants, New York Jets, and Buffalo Bills. Also, I realize I spelt Buffalo wrong. So just going to change that, but not really substantial to what we're talking about in any case. And then I asked what you thought this code line of code here does. And I'm going to just going to walk through it first before I run it. And then we'll see what the actual output is. So favorite numbers is our list. It's a collection of these numbers, one, two, three, and four. And then this part here is actually the for loop that we were referring to. And what it says is for number in favorite numbers, print that number divided by two. So it's like we assign number to each of the values in the list as a variable. This is how this for loop will work. For instance, the first number that we're going to look at is one because that's the first number in the list. So we say number is equal to one and then we do something with that. So here we just print out the number divided by two. So this would be one divided by two, which would be 0.5. And then we go to the next value in the list. So you go and continue to the second value. So now we say, okay, number is equal to two and two divided by two is one. And then we print that, we perform this action with that number. And then we go into the next number and the next number and so on and so forth until we're at the end of the list and then we stop. So that's what the for loop is actually going to do. Now it might be easier visually for you to see what this does if we, if we run it. And it does exactly what I just described. It will go through each of the numbers in this list and print out that number divided by two. So 0.5, 1, 1.5, 1 2. So this is the general idea of a for loop, and we can use for loops in conjunctions with this idea of a list, this collection of numbers or strings, to really codify some of the things that we have been talking about just now. To give another example of why we'd want to do this, um, let's say we have some operation that we're doing for a whole bunch of numbers. So let's say I said, what is the square root of all of the numbers between 1 and 100? So right off the bat, using what we knew before this, we could have just tried to calculate this ourselves. So we can go, 1 to the 1 over 2, and then 2 to the 1 over 2. And we could keep doing this, right? So 3 to the 1 over 2. So these are all square roots, right? And we could keep doing this. Or if we wanted to be a little bit fancier, we could say, okay, number equals 4. We could say number to the 4 over, sorry, number to the 1 over 2. And then we get it for 4. And then we could keep changing this number if we wanted to using the variable. But this is still a pretty time consuming process. So we would have to do this for each of the numbers. If we're asked between all the numbers between zero, between one and a hundred, that's a lot of numbers we'd have to keep doing this over and over for. So this is very manual. Now, if we're going back to our for loop, let's do this with, so I'm going to say list of numbers. So this is our list of numbers. And we're going to say one, two, three, four, five. So those are the numbers that we just tried. And I'm going to do the same thing. So we're going to say four I in list of numbers. So you'll see this a lot when we, when we work at lists of integers, because I is like the shorthand for integer, right? So these are all integers. So we usually use I to represent integer, but as I mentioned before, this is a variable. This could be anything we want. So if we say for, it might be easier to understand if we just named it number like this for number in list of numbers, print number to the one and a half, right? So this is going to produce the same thing that we had done here, right? It's going to start with one and it's going to calculate this, the square root of one and print it out. So here we have one and you'll see these numbers line up. So for two, it was this, for three, it was this, for four, it was this, for five, it was this. However, this was much faster than when we were doing it ourselves. So this is something to keep in mind is that this would be a much faster operation because now we just have to pass in this list of numbers. So how would we do this between all the numbers between one and a hundred? Let's first just start off with going from one to 10. So if I change this to six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and then I do this, it's going to do this for all the numbers between one and 10. So this is for one, the square root of one, the square root of two, the square root of three, the square root of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
and 10. So this is what this is doing. Uh, but this part of it was still a bit manual. I'm having to write in every single number between 1 and 10. So one quicker way to do this is actually using a function called the range function. And the way the range function works is you select two integers and it will go, it will go with all of the integers between those two values. So if we say range 1, 10, it's going to take all the integers between those two values. Now, if we just run this, we're not going to get a list. We actually get just this thing called range back. But if we use this, if we use this like a list in that we go for number in range 1 to 10, print number, it's going to act like a list. It's going to act like a list with all the, the numbers between 1 and 10. But there's a bit of a caveat here. So when we do this, we see that it does what we expected. It goes 1, and then it goes up 1 for each value. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But see that it's missing 10. So this is one of these kind of slightly quirky things about Python, is that whenever we list numbers as like where we're looking between one number and another number, it's going to usually, in most cases, be inclusive on the left side, meaning 1 is going to be included in this list, but exclusive on the right side, meaning 10 is not going to be included in the list. So if we want to have all the numbers between 1 and 10, we actually just have to add 1 to the number at the end. Something you need to remember. So in this case, if we wanted the numbers between 1 and 10, now we have 10 there because we used 11. It does not include this number on the right side. And we can also use range with only one number. And in this case, it will use 0 as the first number. So if we say print number, it's going to start at 0. So again, what we're doing here is instead of using a list, like this list of numbers, we're going to just use range, and this will take all of the numbers, the, the whole numbers, between those two values. So between 1 and 11, all of the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And to just reiterate how this is going to work, let's do this but using the same, the same code as here. So print number to the 1 half. Okay, so if we do this, we get the same exact result. And in Python, we're doing the same thing with these two lines of code, right? This is just a little bit more manual. We have to write every single number out. Using this range function, we can now just define a start and an end, and it will do it for all the values between those two numbers. So that's one thing about this that makes this a little quicker for us. Now, when I mentioned before that we wanted to do the values between 1 and 100, if we did it this way, we'd have to keep going 11, 12, 13, 14, that would take a long time, right? We'd have to write every number between 1 and 100. Now, we could just do this. We could say range 1 and 101 because we want to include 100, and then we're going to run the same line of code using 101. And you can see, wow, we have a lot of code, we have a lot of output here. And this is exactly what we were saying before. This is the square root of all the numbers between 1 and 100. So 100, the square root of 100 is 10, and you can see we have all the numbers here which is really pretty incredible, right? And it, it ran it very quickly. So here we can use this for loop to basically perform these many operations in a simpler way than doing it manually. And then we can use the range function to specify a bunch of numbers, even if there are a lot of them. So we don't have to write every single number between 1 and 100. We can basically just use range and say, OK, for all the numbers between 1 and 100. OK, great. So that's a little bit of a primer on for loops. In the next video, we're going to jump back into our equation and kind of use these for loops to try to solve